hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making boxes on the scroll saw. Well, this one actually comes by viewer request. I had an email of a gentleman that contacted me and said, I'd like to see you make some boxes on the scroll saw. Now guys, boxes are some of the best skill building projects out there and they're instant gratification projects because they're so quick and so easy to make. But a lot of people think that you need a table saw, you need a router table, you need all these fancy tools, and usually the crafting woodworker that might just have a sander or a scroll saw, that sort of thing, they don't feel that they can make boxes because all they have is a scroll saw. Well, I'm gonna show you today that that's not the case, and it's all gonna start off with some two inch wide cherry. Well, I have this piece of cherry. Uh, it is 9 sixteenths of an inch thick, and I have milled it to two inches wide. Now, guys, I didn't just want to do a square box here today. I didn't want to do 45 degree angles. I want to do a nine-sided box. So in order to do a nine-sided box, we need to cut our angles on this piece at 20 degrees. A 20 degree angle on the scroll saw is a much easier angle to cut than what a 45 is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set our scroll saw. Well, I've taken a scrap and I have cut it over at the table saw to a 20 degree angle at the end. Now, if you don't have a table saw, as I said, it's not that imperative. You can mark this 20 degree angle here uh, on your board, cut it with your scroll saw, and then sand carefully up to the line to get your angle. So what you want to do is you want to set the tension on your blade, and once you get that set, you will use your shop made square to tilt your table to the 20 degrees. Now it doesn't really matter if you wanna tilt it left or right, that's not really the important part here. The important part is that you get it at the 20 degree angle. And once you're happy with it at that 20 degrees, lock it in place. So now that you've got the angle on your scroll saw set at your 20 degrees, you, what you want to do is prep your stock. So the very first thing that I want to do here is we need to mark a square line at one end of our stock. Now guys, this is one of the most important steps next to setting your angle because you really need that end of your board here to be square. You also need all of your pieces in this case to be exact. So you need to decide at this point in time what is the inside of your board and what is the outside of your board. We're going to take this over to the scroll saw and at that 20 degree angle we're going to very carefully cut along our square line. Well, I've cut my board down to be a little more manageable. Um, we have that 20 degree angle now cut in our one side, cut with the scroll saw. And what I've done is I have set my combination square to two inches. We're gonna line it up with our cut here. This is for repeatability. So we're gonna line it up with our cut. We're gonna give a little mark here. And we'll square this off right at that line. Just like that. Now guys, what you want to do now is you want to take this over to the scroll saw and cut that other 20 degree angle. But you have to remember it has to slope down like this. Our blade is tilted to the one side, so just be careful that you know which way you're supposed to be cutting it, which way your angle is supposed to go. So let's take this over to the scroll saw and cut this 20 degree angle. And there is our first piece cut, and we will label this as 1T. That is the first piece in the box, and this is the top. So what you want to do at this point now is we want to keep this as always the outside. You can tell which is the outside because of the angles. The smaller side is the interior of the box. The wider side is the exterior. 
So we want the outsides to match up. So we're going to take our square. We're going to square off across this line, just a little past it. The reason that you do this is in case you went a little woogity on this first one, you're not relying on this edge to get the new line. So you're going to start here. And because our blade in this case is tilted to the right, what we want to do is we want to turn this board around and cut along that line at our 20 degrees. We're then going to mark with our set square, turn it back around the other way and cut our 20 degrees and label it. It's important to label which piece goes where. And there is our second piece. So guys, we know that we're making a nine sided box. What we want to do is continue labeling and continue cutting all the way across our stock until we get all nine pieces. And with all nine pieces cut, we are going to sand the interior surface uh, using a piece of sandpaper on a piece of three quarter inch MDF. We're only going to sand the inside for now. Guys, important note here, don't mix up the order of your pieces. It's important to pay attention to these labels to keep them in the right order. Well, it's now time to glue our box together, or at least the wall of our box. And what I have here is some inch and a half wide masking tape or painter's tape. I have a straight edge and I have a little bit of butcher paper down on the bench to protect it from the glue. So what we want to do is taking our pieces in order. This is piece one, two, three, all the way across to nine. You want to lay it down against the straight edge and then press it onto your masking tape, just like that. Now, guys, here is the thing. You want to take your second one and push it tight in to the point of your piece and against your straight edge. You want to get kind of a tight joint there and then we'll glue that in or we'll push that down onto the tape. Now we're gonna continue doing that all the way across for all nine pieces. Okay, and with all of them laid and secured on the tape, we no longer need our straight edge, so we can get rid of that, and we're going to apply glue in each one of these grooves here, and then we will fold it all together and use the tape to secure it. All right, so at this point, if you want, you can use strap clamps to help you hold this together. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clamp it all up as well as with the masking tape and clean up the squeeze out. While we are waiting for this to dry, we can make the base or the bottom of our box. So I'm just going to measure here across our assembly. And we don't want the measurement from edge to edge because the purpose here is to give kind of a decorative base to clean this up to, let's say, hide any imperfections. So we want it just a little bit smaller. So from the edge of one of our flat pieces to the tip of the corner is actually uh, 5 and 11 sixteenths. So we are going to make our base 5 and a quarter. So what I have here is some 5 16 inch thick walnut that was up in the rack. I have my compass here set to make a five and a quarter inch circle. And I'm just going to draw that circle and I'm going to take it over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut it out. Now, truth be told, guys, with my table tilted to the left or my blade tilted to the right in my case, I'm going to leave this tilted at the 20 degrees and we're going to cut this clockwise. Once you get it cut, give it a good sanding and then we can carry on from there. We can use our sandpaper on the MDF to flatten out whatever side we want to be the bottom. Okay, and with that done, what we can do is take our circle for our base. We're going to apply some glue around the edge, center it on there with our 20 degree taper coming out 
this way, kind of up to the top, and we can glue that and clamp that and let it dry. Well, at this point, we can pretty much unclamp our box and we're going to give the entire exterior a good sanding with a random orbital sander. So remove your masking tape, give it a good sanding, and then we can start making the lid. Well, at this point, we need to make the lid for our box. And the first thing we want to do, it's going to be a two-part lid. The first part will be our interior ring that will hold it centered on our box here. And the second one will be our outer ring. So we need to take measurements here on what size circle that we need for the interior. You have to measure your own box. I don't know the size of yours. From there, we will reset our blade to 90 degrees on the scroll saw and we can cut our circle out and then we will just verify that it fits inside of our box. I want to make the lid for the box now and I've measured across here and I think that if I give it six inches in diameter, we're going to have a nice little one eighth of an inch overhang all the way around. And I've chosen a scrap of quarter inch thick poplar. I really like these green colors. I like the grain, the pronounced grain. So I'm going to cut this out over the scroll saw, this six inch diameter circle, and then I'll show you what to do next. I have also cut another disc of cherry, ever so slightly smaller than our one for the interior of the box. And these will be the three parts to our lid. Now guys, what we want to do now is using the center punch here where we drew our circles. In the bottom layer, we're going to drill a quarter inch diameter hole part way through our piece. Same thing with our top layer. And in our middle layer, our poplar, we're going to drill it as a through hole. Well, to assemble the lid, I have a small little short piece of quarter inch diameter dowel. We're going to place it into our bottom section of cherry. We're going to take our poplar section, place it over top of that, and then our top cherry section on top of that. Now I said before um, to only glue or only drill this quarter inch diameter hole part way, but I decided that I wanted a simple handle on the box. So out of some 3 8 walnut, I cut just a half circle and drilled a quarter inch diameter hole in the bottom and that will sit there like that. Now this quarter inch dow uh, dowel will help align everything throughout your lid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this all together. We want to alternate the grains. So you see the poplar is going this way, cherry is this way. Again, poplar this way, cherry this way, and then the walnut is gonna go across the cherry. That will help with warping. Kind of the way plywood alternates the grains, this will give your lid a little more stability. So we'll get this glued up, clamped up, and let it completely dry. And once the glue is dry on your lid, give everything a good sanding. And there is your box. Nine-sided. Scroll saw made box. Give it a try, guys. And there you have it. A nine sided scroll saw box. Guys, for years, the scroll saw has uh, received a bad rap. They, everyone thinks it's a crafting toy. Everyone thinks that you can only do little small crafty projects. Everyone always thinks all you can do is kind of fret work on it, but that is the furthest thing from the truth. You can make anything on the scroll saw that your imagination can come up with and you actually have a ton of versatility between the tilting of the blade left and right and the direction that you cut. You can change all kinds of things. You can, as you saw here today, very easily make a nine sided box by cutting 20 degree angles. It's all a matter of measuring carefully and cutting carefully. So with that being said, don't cut outside your comfort zone. And what I mean by that is don't try to power through this. You don't have to be fast to be good. And I know that there are some guys out there that are very fast. They fly through these projects, but are they good? I don't know. I don't know. 
you sometimes need to pull back on the reins a little bit uh, to, to be able to get the control that you need. So, piece of advice for cutting circles for the lid. You have to remember, guys, it's really strange that for a tool that is designed to cut curves, one of the hardest things to cut on a scroll saw are curves, are a circle. And the reason for that is you need to have your turn rate equal your feed rate. So if you're feeding too fast and turning too slow, you're going to get a really wide arc. If you're feeding too slow and turning too fast, you're going to get a tight arc. But if you are feeding exactly the same rate as what you're turning it, you're going to get an exact perfect circle. And that takes practice. There's no jig, there's no magic formula, there's no way to do it other than practice. And once you practice, the results are fantastic. So guys, if you're not comfortable with that, cut outside the lines and sand up to them if that's what makes you feel better. The important part is not how you do it. The important part is that you see the capabilities of your scroll saw and that you try it. That is the most important part. And if you take nothing away from today's show, at least take that away, that the scroll saw is more capable than most people give it credit for. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. Uh, I really appreciate this suggestion coming in about the scroll saw boxes. Boxes are one of the best, and I mean best, uh, skill builders out there for our craft. Whether you do them on the table saw, on the band saw, or do them by hand, whether you do them on the scroll saw, it doesn't matter how you do them. Every single one builds a different skill set. And if that skill set is just learning how to set up your tools to get those perfect miters and those perfect angles, then you've learned something. It is a skill builder like no other, so make yourself some boxes, guys. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I want to thank you for the suggestion of the scroll saw boxes. Maybe we'll do a different kind on another week. I hope you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope that you've learned something from it. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.